Hello everybody, my name is Branwen Opako and I'm the director of the documentary film The Education of Oma Obama. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, positiver Rassismus heißt, man versucht Respekt zu zeigen, uh, aber letztendlich ist man doch der Überzeugung, dass man selbst der Bessere ist. Verzeihen Sie mir den, den Ausdruck Armenhaus Afrika, aber es ist ja wohl was dran. Schauen wir nochmal in dieses Armenhaus Afrika und schauen wir uns auch Ihr Land an, Kenia. Ich würde gerne erstmal noch was da zu dieser Russland-Diskussion sagen. Für mich ist es sehr interessant zu beobachten, wie diese Hilfeorganisation vorangeht im Vergleich jetzt zu der Situation mit der Hungerhilfe Hilfe Afrika. Man redet hier zum Beispiel von Koordinationsstellen, was macht die Regierung, wie wollen wir das organisieren, einen Betrieb in Russland, einen Betrieb mhm. in Deutschland, was in der Afrika-Hilfe überhaupt nicht geschehen ist. Das war quasi so, man könnte fast sagen, ein, ein, ein schwarzes Volumen. Und im Gegenüber stand dann Europa mit sehr vielen Ideen, wie man das Problem bewältigen will, obwohl im Grunde kein Mensch richtig über Afrika reden könnte. Warum ist das eigentlich so? Man muss den Leuten fragen. Wollen die das überhaupt? Aber die brauchen es doch. Woher? Wer sagt, dass sie das brauchen? Ja, aber die müssen doch so entwickelt werden wie wir. Die müssen doch dieselben Möglichkeiten haben wie wir. Warum? Warum? Wer sagt, dass das, was ihr habt, ist besser als was die da haben? So, hello, Branwen. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. So, um, where are you right now? I'm at the, currently in Los Angeles. I'm attending the Pan African Film Festival here. Yeah. And how's that going? It's a very interesting experience. I've been to this festival before um, with um, with a documentary called Dirt for Dinner, which was my first documentary about the first um, black policeman uh, in East Germany. So I've attended this festival before, but um, it's, good. it's nice to be back. Okay. Especially with a film that has a, an American kind of related aspect to it. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your background. Um, my father is from Nigeria. My mother is from Wales. Um, I was born in Lagos. I grew up in Nigeria. And um, I went to study film in, in Germany in the early 90s. Okay. And so where in Germany did you study? In Berlin. I okay. went to the, um, the Berlin Film Academy, okay. which is quite a well-known film school. Mm -hmm. It was attended by Raoul Peck, um, uh, Wanjiro Kinwanjui, who you might know from her film Black in the Western World. Uh, she's Kenyan. And Sitsi Dangaremba, the, uh, the famous author and, uh, of the of Nervous Conditions. Um, her book is on the list of... 100 best novels ever written on the continent of Africa. Ah. And of course, Aoma Obama, uh, about whom my film is, and myself. We were like the, f at the time we were studying, we were the four African students in, in film school. Ah, okay. Women students. Okay, cool. So tell us about the film. Tell us, how did you meet Aoma? Just, just tell us about as how I the film said, came, came about. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, we attended film school together in the early 90s. And, um, We were all highly kind of conscious of the portrayal of the African continent in film. Uh, we loved the medium of film, but we were not happy with the way we had been, we had seen our continent portrayed. And we felt that we were making a contribution to kind of rectifying these images. So it was a conversation that we all, you know, had together. And Aoma and I became friends, you know, independently of that and kept in contact over the years. So that um, when in 2008, um, her brother was you know, becoming very prominent in politics, we thought, or I thought, it would be a great opportunity to tell this our you know, post-colonial uh, African diaspora story in the context of a phenomenon that's going to be of, of great interest to everybody in the world. So we kind of wanted to snatch that uh, historical opportunity and also we felt it was important to to tell this story from our perspective because it was clear to us that, that the story would be told you know the first african-american to to be uh, president of the united states of america somebody is going to tell the story there are going to be many films made so let's come uh let's be take this opportunity let's use the energy around our us 
you know, still as who we are, were before and, um, and tell the story so that our contribution is there. So I, I, that's how I put it to Aoma when I went to see her in Nairobi in 2008, early in the year. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, you know, let's, let's do this. And she was a little reticent because, you know, for her, she had been, you know, having to deal with media, you know, suddenly descending on her and um, she was she was reticent about what do you what what is this what do you want from me you know uh, are you coming here as my friend or are you coming here as a media person are you a filmmaker now do you know what I mean so we had to talk we had to we had to bond we had to I was also feeling uncomfortable about it all but I just I knew I had to do it so I just I just had to you know convince her talk to her make her understand the same time I got to see her work and got to see her projects in Nairobi, and I was like even more convinced that that this was going to be a worthwhile project. Mm, mm, great, great. So, um, so now, um, tell me about the making of the film. Well, what sort of things did you have to do in order to prepare to make this film? You know, you're doing a biographical film of a living person. You've got to follow around. You just talked about the issues of trust and familiarity but like what did you have to do i mean how did you finance it once you got her interest once you got her interested well you've got lots of questions but they are all related um well the first thing i had to do was the thing about making documentary films and you're a filmmaker too Flo, so you'll know this it's all about documentary film you kind of get inside the the, the tide and you follow it so it's kind of also telling you what to do so having met her, having talked to her, having seen through being in her house, through interacting with her uh, daughter and her relatives, through seeing her, you know, work at the time, uh, you know, for Care International, for, with her own uh, foundation that she was just beginning to create. I could see the activism, I could see all the things, the elements were there. So it was a question of how to start. And so what I did was I said, you know, let's, let's start at the, at the, during the elections because that's, in, that's a, a, a moment we have to capture. I didn't have anybody on board in terms of broadcasters at that point, but I knew that I had to capture this, you know, this moment in terms of, of the, the election and, and the transformation of our Omar Obama from being our Omar Obama to being, you know, the sister of the president of the United States of America or not, you know, I mean, we didn't know how it was going to turn out, but certainly we knew that that was a, a turning point in a moment, a very important moment. So what I did was I went back to Berlin and I, I got, you know, I borrowed a camera. I got a friend of mine who's a fantastic cameraman, um, Kolya Brandt. I said to him, look, I don't have any money <laughs> at all, but um, I'm going to invest my own money in buying your plane ticket, my plane ticket. I'm going to be the sound woman. We're going to go to Kogelo, you know, which is in, in, in Nyanza, just on the banks of, 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 um, of Lake Victoria, which I found incredibly significant, you know, the, the banks of Lake Victoria, the River Nile, and then, you know, the, anyway, I, I digress. Anyway, um, so we, we jumped on a plane and we went down and spent 10 days with Aoma in the homestead of the, of the family, uh, Obama family in Kogelo, running up, you know, to, to this to this momentous occasion and we meditated there together and we we prepared our mind and they prepared their mind and their spirit for what was coming so that that's how it started we did these 10 days you know on kind of spec so, so to speak and then when we got back um, I went to the German um, the German broadcaster ZDF and I said this is what I'm starting do you want to come on board and then they did ah, great great Great, yeah. So, what were your so uh, in 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 the making of the film? What were your challenges? I mean, once you got the money, okay, you got the trust, you got the money. Now you're doing the film. What's the challenges after this? Um, well, it's the challenges during shooting. You 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 you, you make a list. This is what I do. Um, I had I had ten days of you know so-called fly on the wall. It's not fly on the wall because I don't really like fly on the wall. I don't want people to. So I don't want to sneak around with a camera and, and, and steal pictures from people, you know. So I like to tell people, I'm coming, this is the kind of frame we're using, this is the kind of picture we want to make, this is the kind of thing we want to say with the picture, so that everybody is kind of involved in the creative process to the extent that they can set themselves in the scene, you know. They can prepare 
however they need to prepare to be filmed. So it wasn't really fly on the wall, but for those days leading up uh, to the to the elections, and then of course the joy and uh, and and relief, but it very, you know, it was ambivalent. It was a really interesting atmosphere. When you see the film, if you've seen the film, the atmosphere, you know, the wind is there, everybody's overjoyed, but at the same time, there's also intrepidation. It's as a, you know, what's going to happen to him? What's going to happen to us? What's going to happen to the world? You know, it was a beautiful uh, um, experience because you, you really, you were really there when, when the, the direction of history Changed. You were really present in, in a place where it was all very, very clear. Somehow, everything you know. You, you had the you had the Western press outside the, the gates, you know, pressing in. You you had people, a, a community that has its 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 hierarchies already, uh, having to maybe rearrange those hierarchies now because the new dynamics are coming in. So there was a lot of very subtle stuff going on. Uh -huh. So that's. That's the one side. And then in the middle of all this, in the center of all this, you have Alma Obama, you know, who's a woman, who's a Western educated woman, very well educated woman, who's very conscious of her roots and her cultural, uh, very protective of her family, very aware of what this, uh, of what this outside force is. And, and, and her kind of trying to balance all these things and trying to, to play the part of, of the bridge, you know, between different uh, um, groups. It was, it was beautiful to, to, to observe, but then afterwards you're going now say, I'm going to tell her story. How did we get to this point? How, how, did, how did we get to, the, to this day um, where her brother becomes the president and where she becomes, you know, a member of the first family? So we, we, we went back. I, I talked to her a lot, of course, and, you know, who's your friends, who can, who, who's important for, for your life. And then there was like, oh, don't talk to so-and-so. And I was like, look, and this is where I felt very, very proud and, very, and I'm very grateful to Oma. She never tried to influence me, even though she's, as I said, very aware of, of, the, of the power of the media and what can be done. But she never tried to, to kind of stop me from telling what the story I wanted to tell. It was, she, she just left, you know, me to do it. So I went and collected, you know, important protagonists from her life and, and just unfolded the story, always with a historical context. Because the interesting thing about individual lives is that they, they exist within a historical context. And this historical context is the bigger picture that's very interesting to all of us because we, we find ourselves in there as well. So her story, you know, growing up, just after independence, you know, seeing her, uh, her father struggling with a Western education, trying to build a new country and all the dynamics and the political differences and difficulties the post-independence African countries, you know, went through. You've got that. You've got the grandfather who had to, I mean, I don't want to tell the whole story of the yeah. film, to be okay. honest. I don't want to give it all away. But I, I tried to, 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 to put her story into that sort of um, historical context. So okay, that every okay. one of her own personal chapters has reflects a bigger chapter in in the in our history so to speak wow that's great that's great you've really set up a nice picture of what the film is so what's your favorite part of the film i mean what makes you really proud when you see the film what, what, what is it about the film that you just really love i, I really love the film i must say um I don't know. I mean, there are moments in it that, that, that move me, you know, every time I, I watch it. But it, it also changes, you know, because I can, I can talk about the, the, my favorite part of the process of making the film. Mm -hmm. But even there, there, there are different things. I mean, during shooting, for example, um, again, I don't want to give away too much, but there, there's a moment where, you know, uh, uh, President Obama... Uh, it has been named and the family's instinctive reaction is to go to the grave of Barack Obama Sr. and to report to him that um, we're going to the White House. And I, I love that part. I mean, the way it's, the way to understand, because that's my feeling, you know, as an African, I always feel, we talked about it earlier, you know, I always feel like we're not just us. We are ourselves and our ancestors. And so, and everything we do and everywhere we go, they're with us and, and, they, uh, and, and they're taking us there as well, you know? So 
the fact that that happened spontaneously was just very poignant to me because it it it, it, it encapsulates for me what I think is 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 this is almost the solution to our to our conflict as Africans is this connection. As long as we keep that connection to our ancestors, as long as we um, keep the, the 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 roots, you know, intact, we can't really go wrong. Not in the long run.